Welcome to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. Today I'm going to be talking about three albums, all by more or less singer-songwriter Joel Plaskett. Normally I wouldn't want to cram three records into one video. Hey, but it's the pace my life's going at right now, so uh, let's go over this. So I recently visited the city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I wanted to look forward to something on that trip. You know, I was both kind of excited about Halifax as this city on the sea, but I didn't really know what to think of it. I thought maybe it's the Boston of Canada, which I don't think is really true. But yeah, I basically had no idea what to think about it. The one association I had with this, weirdly is enough, is I remember years ago meeting a guy at an open mic who was a fan of this Halifax singer-songwriter named Joel Plaskett. So I decided on a musical whimsical whim before going on my little trip, I would just get as many Joel Plaskett CDs as I could out of the library. So Joel Plaskett's discography is slightly convoluted because it contains three different columns. So there's his band from the 90s, Thrush Hermit. He also has some solo albums. Uh, and then he also has his, I guess you could say, quasi solo albums, which are billed as the Joel Plaskett Emergency. So the first of these records I'm going to talk about is Clayton Park. Uh, this was the final release put out by Joel Plaskett's band, uh, though Thrush Hermit, they were very short-lived. I think they put out three EPs and then two albums, and this seems to be the only one that's uh, easy to find. Uh, and yet, oddly, Thrush Hermit seems to almost be more iconic uh, than their frontman Joel Plaskett himself. So, for example, when I walked into a record store on my recent trip to Halifax, I went through uh, the contemporary music section and didn't find any Joel Plaskett, but up front they did have a bunch of re-releases of a cassette version of Clayton Park. And indeed, when I looked at some of the reviews of his projects that followed, uh, critics were compare comparing them less favorably to Clayton Park, uh, which was weird for me because I, I enjoyed all three of these records, but Clayton Park is certainly the closest thing on here to an acquired taste. This is a kind of weird, though not unusual, experience for me. I'll regularly find people saying the best album by an artist is one of the less enjoyable ones, uh, and, and that was the case here, where it's not like there's nothing good here, but it's certainly more of an acquired taste. So I can definitely say the songs are expressive, they're their lyrics have some interesting thought into them, but they often sound kind of like garage band rock, you know, with very loud drums and guitar solos that go on, you know, just a bit too long. Plaskett singing and the occasional indie rock synthesizer thrown in the background for a cool little stylistic touch reminds me a little bit of Wilco, but the overall garage band sound reminds me of Kiss, and particularly Kiss on their Alive album. Again, I like a lot of what Kiss has done, but a lot of people are like, Alive is their best album. I'm like, no, it's their messiest one with all the guitar solos going on way too long. Why do people like this stuff? Anyway, so this one is billed as a band, as Thrush Hermit. Clearly a bit more of a collaborative project, but I feel like we can still discuss it uh, in a conversation on Plaskett's trajectory more broadly, since he writes the majority of the songs. I can't tell if he's the singer on all or the vast majority of the songs. I mean, it sounds like his voice on most of them, but two of the other guys in the band are also credited as vocalists, and I don't know, maybe they have similar voices. So the highlight of this album is definitely its opening track, uh, one of the few tracks on the record that actually is concise, that doesn't get bogged down on guitar solos, and it's a song called From the Back of the Film. So as someone who's a movie buff, I deeply relate to this one. It's kind of celebrates the surrealism of cinema where something as dark in the real world as lethal violence can just become this act of theatrical performance. And the singer contrasts his joy for these cinematic moments uh, with his sense of uselessness in the real world. And then after that, we kind of build on the theme of that sort of awkward, alienated person with lots of songs of ennui and social awkwardness, songs often set around bars and around the live music scene. Uh, the grungy track too, Oh Man, What Do I Do, was actually written by bassist Ian McGettigan, but it's a great example of this and it's consistent with Plaskett's broader themes. 
Track three, Violent, Violent Dreams, again, sort of continues that imagery uh, from in the back of the film, contrasting violent imagery with sort of mundane real life. It's also an interesting example of a song that's kind of musically ambitious while also st sounding sort of grungy, standard, simple rock and roll, but it has lots of little interesting musical moments. Uh, after that, we get a song called The Day We Hit the Coast, uh, which is more melodically catchy, and the lyrics are disarmingly simple. It's just about enjoying traveling to the countryside. Plaskett's songwriting gets pretty strong uh, towards the end of the record. I think the song Oh My Soul has an interesting double character in that both like many of these songs, it it's about a kind of everyman figure uh, in the in the music world, but also in the chorus, the singer distances himself, like, oh, my soul, I don't want to be seen as this person. We also get a cool song on here called We Are Being Reduced, which starts by just being sort of cynicism about day-to-day -day life, and then it turns into this creepy mantra about an alien attack. So yeah, in short, there's a lot of interesting, relatable themes on here. I just find the guitar solos a bit too long, which, you know, no disrespect respect to the other guys in the band who might have also been very successful as solo artists, but I kind of like that Plaskett leaves the jam band thing behind and moves on to solo projects. So this is his first solo album in need of medical attention. It's a library copy, and as often the case, some fool lost the original inserts of the library, just put in a black and white photo. Well, put a version of the original cover on the screen. I believe this is painted by Plaskett's wife, Rebecca Kratz. So In Need of Medical Attention starts with a song called The News of Your Son. And this kind of continues the focus from the Clayton Park album on losers. You know, someone who feels like he's not worthy, who needs, as the title says, medical attention to cure his chronic depression, his ennui. Then we have a song called When I Have My Vision, which is this lazy loser, but more from his own perspective, you know, envisioning one day he will have grandeur and greatness. You know, I feel like the solo format frees Plaskett a bit up from the band sound. You know, you don't just get your electric guitars and drums on here. You'll occasionally get some nice horns thrown in, thrown in as on track three. Track four has this eerie chorus of falsetto singing. Ooh. Track number five, I'd Rather Be Deadly Than Dead, was for me the most memorable song on here. It's both a continuation and a break on the established theme of relatable self-deprecation and that it moves to more a total declaration of isolation. Like, you know, I don't care what other people think of me. I'm going to put them off because it's better to be deadly than dead. Track number six, She Made a Wreck Out of Me. Uh, continues with the medical metaphors. You know, this is an album that really sticks to its title, constant references to doctors and needs for medical help, uh, and it also plays with some country music. And we also get more of that country feel uh, with track number seven. Another thing I notice here is Plaskett has this writing technique where rather than just doing a catchy chorus, sometimes he'll wait till the end of a song uh, and repeat a bit of a, a, ma a, ma a mantra. Uh, kind of building up rather than having the repeated chorus. It's a different way of bringing satisfaction. This album ends with a song called Goodbye Doctor, which serves as a sort of plot twist because after talking about how its protagonist or its various protagonists need help all along, it is the doc doctor who ultimately dies at the end. This is partially, I believe, a real tribute to Joe Plaskett's grandfather, who was a doctor who died around the time he was uh, writing these songs, but it also sort of ties to together the theme of it all. Uh, and once again, we see Plaskett adding memorable moments that don't quite fit the melody at the end of his song, a kind of Paul McCartney-like touch of sewing, or could we say surgically stitching songs together. So I, I would say this album is quite the underrated gem. I often find albums that try too hard to be concept albums end up getting too musically repetitive and kind of boring and the concept is way too abstract for anyone to care about. But honestly here we just have a bunch of catchy indie songs consistently making references to this idea of needing medical attention, this great cover art. This is a great example of a coherent album. Love it. Finally we get an example of Joel Plaskett 
of the Joel Plaskett Emergency, the sort of third iteration of his musical creation. This one comes a couple years later uh, in 2001, down at the Tekiber. Uh, given the title and the cover art, you could think this is a live album, but it's just a studio record and it's named for the place in Halifax where a lot of the recording and rehearsals took place. Actually, on my trip to Halifax, I made a point of passing by the Kyber, taking a photo of this album in front of the Kyber. Also visited another spot in Joel Plaskett lore, uh, the site of the Park Avenue sobriety test. Uh, but that's an album to discuss another day. Anyway, this album sees Plaskett and his band of two go for a kind of stadium rock sound. Think Springsteen, but with a greatly reduced E Street band, you know, no Clarence Clemens uh, grooving on the sax. And personally, I love it. I think they get a great sound of their fairly small band, though I did notice the negative reviews of this one to sort of say it's too low bit budget for what it aspires to be. The first track, I guess the, the title track, is called Down at the Kyber. It's not really about the Kyber. It's sort of the Kyber is one place referenced in this song about being a musical Pilgrim, it's kind of reminiscent of the Who's. I still haven't found what I'm looking for, but with a kind of rootsier uh, Canadiana edge thrown on it. Compared to the last two albums, which I kept saying are kind of about these relatable losers from the music scene, Plaskett is going for a slightly different vibe here. He or his character has kind of broken out of this mold and is singing with a bit more cool detachment. Think Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde a little bit, except Bob Dylan on that record is kind of the cool detached cynic where here Plaskett is, uh, he's sometimes in that mode. But he manages to find a balance between the cool and detached side while being a little warmer, channeling different parts of Bob Dylan's musical songwriting style as well as of course his own. Uh, songs like the silly country, there's love in the air, but I'm on the ground. And he also has a kind of uh, Dylan mystic mysticism in maybe we should just go home with with some of its psychedelic imagery about the dark sides of the world channeling uh, Dylan's A Hard Brain's Gonna Fall. But yeah, at other moments, he's he's not cynical. He's, if anything, more of a motivational speaker with songs like Clueless Wonder and This Is a Message. Even the sort of romantically pessimistic song Unconditional Love has that motivational speaker feel with its chorus of Are You Ready? Tracks seven and nine uh, deal with struggling to make it as a musician. Blinding Lights uh, is perhaps named for the Bruce Springsteen song, Blinded by the Light. And whereas that old classic is a fast paced joyride of nostalgia, this one is its grungy, cynical cousin. So even if there's overall a motivational tone to this record, it's, it's not entirely motivational. It's still sung from the perspective of an indie, somewhat successful musician, you know, wishing for more. Track number eight is a favorite of mine, just in that it's catchy, though maybe doesn't quite fit in with the rest of the record. It's called True Patriot Love, and it just sort of works as a Canadian classic because it just does wordplay on the Canadian and American national anthems, but it's just about a love triangle. Track 10, It's Catching On, once again makes me think of Bob Dylan. So Plaskett jumps between the light, fun words of Bob Dylan's subterranean homesick blues to the somber Dylan of a hard rain's gonna fall. I, I, I guess it, it sort of speaks to the broader character of this record. You know, Plaskett doesn't stay in one emotional place too long. He can explore his pessimistic side. Sometimes he's just doing casual world play, but overall it mixes into a coherent sound that's a little bit influenced by Bob Dylan, a little bit influenced by Bruce Springsteen, and a little bit uh, Plaskett finding his own thing. The album concludes uh, with an, uh, an Alton Ellis cover song, or a reggae song, and then a campfire song. You know, it's kind of funny to have this sort of big rocking sound and then end with a sort of amateurish sounding chorus singing about the light of the moon together. It's as if the album was rallying up the fans and then it just invites them to join in, becoming this true collective experience at the end, uh, honoring what I understand to be the kind of anarchist culture of the Kyber Performing Arts Center. So anyway, this is one of the musical icons of Halifax, Nova Scotia, not necessarily a place known for producing musical icons, but quite an interesting range of work. Obviously, Clayton Park is quite beloved, even if it's my least favorite of these three, but really love in need of medical attention. 
and down at the Kyber. Let me know what your thoughts are on these records, what you get out of Joel Plaskett's lyrics in the comments below. I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig Bondi. See you next time. Mm -hmm.